Glory to Jesus Christ. We're here at the fifth Sunday of this great Lent. And, you know, one question we all kind of think through, we may be hearing from time to time is, do we believe in God? Especially from every person as they're working through their faith. Does God exist? Do we believe in God? Is God real? These are the questions that come. And as we work through that, one of the things I think we need to ask a bigger question of and is this equally important? Not just do we believe in God. Do we believe in the devil? Do we believe in evil spirits? I think sometimes when we live our life, we think we can opt into faith and believing in Christ, or we can opt out and be neutral. And this is how we navigate the world, and the world kind of presents this to us like this. But what we see is, no, it's not so neutral. That just as Christ and His angels and the saints are working to bring us closer, that the evil one and his forces are tirelessly working to draw us away. And we see a little bit of that in this gospel passage. You know, we see here that it says that this woman who had a spirit of infirmity, notice the word spirit, of infirmity. The idea that this is being put upon her from the outside had a spirit of infirmity. You know, we were saying the Nicene Creed, we believe in one true God, Father Almighty, maker of all things, visible and invisible. So there are invisible creation that is there. The angels are part of that, but the fallen angels are also part of that. The fallen angels that are constantly suggesting and trying to get us away, making choices away from God. That's why even in the Genesis account, pretty much right after creation, on the third chapter, the serpent is brought into the story. To know, to make us understand that it's not just God and us, but there are evil forces, the evil angels. And even when we talk about fasting, Sometimes we, we think through this. Why do we fast? Why does the church tell us to fast? And we try to explain this, even especially to children, we try to explain, what is, why do we fast? Why is that important? That's actually a, can be a hard question. And sometimes we say, well, we fast so that, you know, there's different ways we look at it. We fast so that we show God that we love Him more than any other things that we like. Right? So I love Him more than meat, or love Him more than whatever I'm giving up in addition, right? I love God more. I'm showing that love. And that's definitely there. And then we may, otherwise we may say, we fast so that we can get control. Because instead of the body leading the soul, now when I'm hungry, I'm telling my body, no. You know, I'm not just giving into that. And that's helping me have discipline. So that's why we fast. But... When we read the prayers, and if you haven't read through the Lenten prayers, I encourage you to bring that in, in your fast, is to read and sing through or read those prayers. And if you've come you've, on, on Mondays and Wednesdays, but even at home, read through the Lenten prayers. And constantly what we see is the reason that we fast mainly is to defeat and to fight against Satan. That is what the church is telling us, that this is a warfare. And that the fasting is there to help us fight, to defeat the, the, the devil. And here we see this woman who's been tied up, not able to look up, right? She's been, she's been bound where she's not able to even look up. She's bent. And one of the things I think Satan tries to do in our life is to try and tie us up. And the way I think that he does this very often is he tries to mess with our congruence. And what I mean by that is what we do in the church and what we do outside of the church. And he tries to make those very, very different. That's what I feel like he really tries to attack with us. So he, we come to church and we do things, but then he wants us to try to do something different away from that. And that's actually been shown as one of the main things to help that kind of predicts whether children stay in the church 
is they look at their parents and the adults and all, and they say, okay, whatever is happening here, is it also happening outside of here? This is a clear indication of whether people want to be part of this or not. So are we praying and doing things inside the church and then doing things opposite of that outside the church? Am I praying and being peaceful in the church, but I'm screaming all the time at home? Am I praying and being nice in the church, but I'm fighting with everyone around me outside of church? Am I, and sometimes for many of us, even as growing up, when maybe some of us have experienced this, where even in the church we see it. We pray and we see kurbana, and then we see a general body or something, and it's like the opposite of that. And it literally causes trauma. I can't tell you the number of young adults I go to and I say, hey, will you stay for the general body meeting? And it's like, no. It's like PTSD. It's like, no, never, never, no. Anything else, Achin, anything else. Because we've seen things that have caused trauma, that made us question the whole thing. We've seen, we've seen things that make us feel like, is this real or not? And that's where Satan really works in all of us. He ties us up in our life, in our inner life, where we have, where we get, where we have habits, where we have strained relationships, where we may have addictions, where we may have a, a, a period where we're looking badly upon others. All of these things, and he's tying us up. And pretty soon, before you know it, we feel stuck. Just like this bent woman, unable to look up at God. Because we've been tied up with all of these things. And we think, deep inside, I'm a mess. And Satan will tell us, and make us feel like, look how far we are from God. How real is all this anyway? You know, that's why even in the way we run our church, it's very important to me that we do things by the way Jesus told us to do it. You know, last week we had our accounts meeting. Uh, Pudiogum. And we had our, our, our accounts, we went through the accounts. And one of the things that you notice here is that we don't have any set number for a subscription. We don't do that. And for me, the reason that's so important is because God himself said that you set aside the tithe and that a person is to give from their free will, not by force, but freely give. And so every year we do that. And to me, the blessing comes is when you listen to the words of God and you don't deviate from it, but we try to listen to it and do it the best we can. The reason that contributions are not posted is because Jesus says, do not let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. Give in secret and let the Father reward you openly. Those are real words that we have to take into account when we run and do things in the church. And when we do things away from, the, from what God is telling us, we will not receive the blessing that God is wanting to give to us. But when God is telling us to do something, we trust in faith that His words mean something. That when we follow these things, that we will be blessed for it. And it's the same thing. I mean, that's one thing with finances. It's the same thing with forgiveness. It's the same thing with the way we do things as a church. It should be guided by. You know, the reason I want the little children in the, in the front uh, as, as much as possible, it's not because, I mean, I, I do like children a lot. But the main reason is because Jesus said, let the little children come to me. And he says, when people ask about, you know, who is, who is the greatest, he takes the little child and puts it in his lap. And he says, this is who you need to be converted to be like. They are the pure in heart. Look at them as your role model. That's why we do the way things we do. That's the, been the guiding principle of how we operate and run things in the church. That has to be lining up. And when it doesn't line up, people don't want to be a part of that. And so the devil tries to tie us up in these different things. And then what we think is, maybe I put myself in it, I can get myself out. But look at what Jesus says to this about this, late, about this woman. He says, Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, think of it for 18 years, be loosed from this bond. 
So he's acknowledging that Satan is the one that has bound her. And it's the same thing that we have to come to acknowledge. That we get bound because this is not a neutral place that we are in. That Satan is working on all of us to try and bind us away from God. To keep us away from His grace. And so only when we come to a place of surrender, where we say, by myself, I'm not going to be able to do it because I didn't get myself into this alone. Satan tempted me towards it, and I listened, but Satan tempted me toward it, towards it, and now I'm bound in it, and I need Christ to loosen this. And this is where we see the, the clear correlation with holy confession. Where we come and we make our confessions and we say, this is where all the places that I'm being tied up. This is all the places in my life that I feel stuck. I feel stuck in my addiction. I feel stuck in my strained relationships. I feel stuck in my habits. I feel stuck in my loose talk. I feel stuck in my sadness and despair. I feel stuck in these things. And we need to have those bonds broken. And that's where we come in confession and, we, and, we, and Jesus is able to loosen those things. And that's why the words that Jesus says to his apostles, whatever you bound on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. And in an absolution prayer, it's those, I release you from all bonds, curses, injunctions. You know, th th those words are very intentional. We see that here in the life, in the story of the bent woman. And so this is the thing that we are called to do. We can't get her, remember it says this here. And sometimes we try to self-treat and self-help. And look what Jesus, I mean what the scriptures say. It says, she was in no way able to raise herself up. She could in no way raise herself up. It's only when she comes to Christ and seeks to be loosed by, her, by him that she's able to do it. And that we're, in those, we're the same way. That by ourselves it won't happen. But our, ch our church, Christ has taught us through the church how this can happen. And I encourage us during this great fast to not just remain tied down, but to look to be loosened by the Lord in the sacrament of holy confession. May all glory be to the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and always, forever and ever. Amen.